Earlier in section 5.2, we learned how to handle the addition rule for disjoint events. So that is if there was no overlap between the two, then you could just add them up. Like here we just added up these four yellow ones, or we added up these two green ones or whatever, although it was technically those green numbers divided by the grand total, but still. But what do you do if there is an overlap? How do you handle it? And that's where the general addition comes in, general addition rule, excuse me. It says for any two events, whether the disjoint or not, then the following rule holds, which is the probability of E or F is equal to the probability of E plus the probability of F minus the probability of E and F. That's the overlap. That's the both part. So for example, suppose you were going to draw a single card from a standard 52 card deck. Let E equal drawing in a heart a heart, and F be drawing a face card, you know, the jacks, the queens, and kings, and so on. So illustrate the following sample using a Venn diagram. So it's a little bit tricky, but over here on the yellow side, this whole yellow ring, I have all my heart cards. My ace of hearts, A, H, my two of hearts, my three of hearts, my four of hearts, and so on. And that includes my king, queen, and jack of hearts. They count in the yellow portion because they're in the yellow ring. That's why I put a little kind of yellowish box around them but they also count in my face cards, which is my blue ring, which is my king, queens, and spades of, or king, queen, and jack, excuse me, of spades, diamonds, clubs, and hearts. So there's an overlap here of the king of hearts, the queen of hearts, and the jack of hearts, and they count for being in both. So we've drawn the diagram, we've shaded and labeled it, and out here, by the way, we have all the rest of the cards, all the diamonds, spades, and clubs that are not face cards. All right, so I shaded in all the events in event E, that's this yellow region right here, that ring right there, and that would be 13 out of 52 because there's 13 cards there. There's these 10 ones in the yellow plus these three ones that are also in the yellow. By the way, notice yellow and blue make green, get it? Because they overlap. I'm crafty like that. All right, now what about the blue portion? That's the events in event F. So I've got that all shaded in blue. That would be 12 out of 52 because there's 3, 6, 9, 12 because the green ones count for being in the blue ring as well because they're face cards. So that gets us 12 out of 52, which is 0 0.231 or so. If you just use your calculator, you can find that. Now, what about probability of E and F? That's the overlap. That's the both of them put together and it's the ring where the rings intersect. And that's the king of hearts, the queen of hearts, and the jack of hearts. So that's the probability of being both a heart card and a face card. And that's three out of 52. And I've color coded it for you to understand. And last but not least, what's the probability of E or F? So it could be an either one or both. Well, that's basically all the ring stuff put together, but you don't want to count the green portion twice. So what you can do is you can take the yellow ring, that's 13, then take the blue ring, that's 12. But the problem with 13 plus 12 is you've counted this little green group in the middle twice. So you want to subtract away those three, and that's what I do right here. So I take 13, that's my yellow ring, plus 12, that's my blue ring, and I subtract away green, of 3 out of 52, and that gets me 22 out of 52 total, which is a decimal of about 0.423. And we're good there. All right, so now that we know that general idea, let's apply it to a two way table. So, and I've sorry, I've already done this because my computer ate it. So we have the female group right here. I'm going to change their color just a little bit to make it a little bit more pink. One second. There we go. That's some pink right there. All right. So there's the probability of female. It's this whole row, which adds up to this total of 4001. So I want to take 4001 and I want to divide it by my big total. Remember, we've seen this table before. It's called a two-way table or a contingency table. So I take 4001 and I want to divide it by 6548 and I get 0.611. There we go. I got the color scheme a little bit better now. All right, so here's the female, kind of this Pepto-Bismol pink right there. And I really want this total over here, which is 4001. Now I want the AA, which I'm going to color in blue. That's this column right here. And that gets me this total of 1194. So I want to take 1194 and divide it by 6548 again, and I'll have about 0.182. 
but now I want both. I want AA and female. So I'm going to highlight that in purple because pink and blue make purple, right? Purple-ish. Uh, that's not quite distinctive enough. Let me go with that purple so you can kind of see it. So it's a different color. It's not green, or it's not blue, and it's not pink. It is its own thing. And that's 665 right here. So if I take that 665 and I divide it by 6548, that's the overlap. That's the both part. Okay. All right, so I found the one row. That's the female row. Then I found the blue column. That's the AA column, the associate in arts. Then I found the overlap. So this is the probability of both. And now I want to do, you know it's coming, either or. So what if I want an AA or female? Okay, so that's the probability of that AA column plus the probability of that female row. But I have to subtract away the overlap. Otherwise, it's not fair. So here's what you're doing. You're taking the 1194 down here and the 4001 over here. But if you just add the two of them, it's not fair because you've counted the 665 group twice and you don't want to do that. So you want to subtract away 665 and that's why we do. We subtract it away so that way we don't count it twice. So I just add up these numbers with my calculator. So 1194 plus 4001 take away 665 and you get 4530. Then you divide that by 6548. Oopsie, I forgot to divide. There we go. And you get about 0.692. And there we have it. And now we know how to apply the general addition rule. And that'll work whether there's an overlap or whether there's not. If there was no overlap, then you wouldn't have to worry about it. You just subtract away zero because the both part would give you no answer. All right, I'll stop this video right here and I'll pick up in the last video for complements and the complement rule. So I'll see you back here then.